Hello, I am Jerry Robinson of Williston, Florida, and wish to thank you for joining us on this 2020 National Day of Prayer. Ordinarily, we would be holding this observance in our pavilion at Heritage Park, but because of the circumstances we are in with the COVID-19 and social distancing, we are observing it through social media. Before we begin, before we begin, I would like to thank our city manager, Scott Lippman, for coming up with this idea and Mr. Logan Brooks for putting it all together. I also wish to thank all the participants by going out of their way to make this observance possible and hope and pray that you will enjoy this presentation and join us with your thoughts and prayers as we observe the 2020 National Day of Prayer. The theme of the 2020 National Day of Prayer is Pray God's glory across the earth. Amen. I cannot see a more appropriate theme for this day. In Habakkuk 2.14 we read, For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. The National Day of Prayer is observed annually on the first Thursday in May. This day of observance designated by the United States Congress asks people to turn to God in prayer and meditation. The, mod the modern law formalizing the annual National Day of Prayer observance was enacted in 1952 and each year since. The President of the United States has signed a proclamation encouraging all Americans to pray on this day. The National Day of Prayer has great significance for us as a nation as it enables us to recall and to teach the way in which our founding fathers sought the wisdom of God when faced with critical decisions. It stands as a call for us to humbly come before God, seeking His guidance for our leaders and His grace upon us as a people. The unanimous passage of the bill establishing the National Day of Prayer as an annual event signifies that prayer is as important to our nation as it was in the beginning. Our opening prayer will be led by Pastor Danny Bennett of the Williston United Methodist Church. Well, friends, we thank you once again for joining us today on this National Day of Prayer, and I would invite you to join me as we begin praying together. Great and sovereign God, through the prophet Isaiah, you promised to strengthen and help us. We have seen that help through your servants in this nation and across the world. Christians who have sought to offer your love to those in need and continue to be your hands and feet. Continue to be strength and protection in this your creation as we face the current realities and aftermath of the coronavirus. Great God of wisdom, in Proverbs you remind us of that gift of wisdom. We ask for that gift for us, for our families, and for all who help oversee this world, that we would offer love to our neighbors in wisdom. We pray that we would follow the guidance that you are offering through doctors and healthcare professionals. God, you have called us to love our neighbor. And in this time, we have learned that loving our neighbor sometimes looks different. We do it all in hopes to keep your creation, your children, safe. God, we praise you in all things. God, when things are wonderful and joyous, we turn to you in praise and worship. When things are not okay, we know that you still walk beside us. And we pray your hand of protection for those who are still working, those deemed essential in our society. We pray for each of us as we begin to go back into the workforce. And we pray for your providence for those who are out of work in this time. In all things, we promise to follow you where you would lead us. Go where, we'd, where you would guide us and listen as you seek to continue to teach us. God, in this day and age, we thank you that you are an ever-present 
source of guidance and hope for us. We pray this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Please join us as we recite the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We will now hear from Ms. Mandy Fugit as she sings for us what a friend we have in Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble everywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrows share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Are we weak and heavy laden, cumbered with a load of care? Precious Savior, still our refuge. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Do thy friends despise, forsake thee? Take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms he'll find and shield thee. Thou wilt find a solace there. Now at this time, we will hear a few words from Pastor Jason Oimby of the Williston First Baptist Church. Well, I want to thank you for the opportunity um, of gathering with you, although this is very different than what we're used to but it is a neat opportunity that we have nonetheless. And I'm so thankful that we can pray no matter where we are and that we have this opportunity to go to the Father. Now, I've been asked to share um, with you a little bit, and I just want to go to God's Word, and I want to look at Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. And I know it's an unusual verse when we consider the National Day of Prayer, but this is what it says. It says, Therefore, since we're surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin which so clings so closely, let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Now I know that this is, like I said, this is an unusual verse. It doesn't seem to fit with National Day of Prayer. But here's my conviction on this. Oftentimes when we talk about the National Day of Prayer, we pray for our nation, and rightly we should, and we should be praying for our nation, especially in this time. But sometimes our prayers almost seem kind of general. We just pray for the nation. But here's what I'm convinced. If we will, as individuals, if God will get a hold of our heart, then great things happen. And so how our nation is changed is by God getting a hold of the individual heart. Because if God will get a hold of the individual heart, well, then all of a sudden he gets a hold of families. And if God gets a hold of families, then all of a sudden he gets a hold of churches and schools and communities. And when God gets a hold of communities, God gets a hold of states. And when God gets a hold of states then great things happen in nations. And so I really believe it's kind of this grassroots movement, and it starts with us as believers, the individual. And so I want to share with you four things that I see here that we ought to be praying for, for ourselves and for those that we know, out of Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. And the first one is that we be a person of great faith. The writer of Hebrews says we're surrounded by this great cloud of witnesses. In fact, it says, therefore, because we're surrounded by this great cloud of witnesses, and the great cloud of witnesses are all the men and women that he's just talked about in the previous chapter, these great men and women of faith. And so our prayer should be that we be part of that cloud of witnesses, that we be part of this group of people that, that, that do more than just gather together. 
that we are a group of people that we see God move in our life and in the life of those around us, where we see God working in mighty ways. And so we need to be a person of great faith. Hebrews eleven six 6 tells us this, without faith it's impossible to please him. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. And so without faith, we can't even begin to approach God. We can't even believe that he exists. We can't find reward from him. And so we need to be a person of great faith. And I, I do believe it's great faith, not just a little bit of faith. Our desire should be people of great faith. There's a story that's recorded in Mark about a man who has a son who's demon-possessed. And the disciples can't cast out the demon. And this man goes to Jesus and he says, If you can do anything, please help us. And Jesus responds with saying, if I can. And then this man says this, I believe, help my unbelief. And what this man is saying is, I, I have faith, I, I believe, help the part of me that doesn't. And so I believe that our prayer should be, God, I want to be a person of great faith. I have faith in you. God, may my faith be even stronger. The second thing, though, is that we run with great endurance. Our prayer should be, God, I have this race that's set before me. May I run it with great endurance. Now, in this passage of Scripture, it says that we're to lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily clings to us or entangles us. What's interesting is I think as believers, we oftentimes focus on the sin. We say, well, is it sin? Does this sin entangle me? And I think as believers, oftentimes we're good at saying, okay, that's something I'm not to be having a part of. That sin right there, I don't need to have that in my life. And then we stop, but I think there's a greater question that we have to ask according to this scripture, and that is this, does this help me run? The writer of Hebrews says, run this race, set aside everything, every weight and sin, every encumbrance and sin. So the question we have to ask ourselves, is this thing in my life helping me run this race? Well, here's what's unusual. We live in a time where God has caused our lives to come to a grinding halt in many ways. All of a sudden, the things that occupied our time and occupied our energy and occupied our thought are not able to do that. We're not able to go do all the things we want to do. We're not able to go all the places we used to go. This is a really good time for us to evaluate our life and say, is this helping me run? This, this event or this, this hobby or this thing that occupied so much of my time, was it helping me run my race? You know, an athlete, a runner, they, they consider everything that they have attached to their body and weight is a critical factor. They want the, the best and lightest shoes possible. They want the, the clothes with the least amount of wind resistance. Everything is taken into consideration. The writer of Hebrews is saying the same thing for us. We run with endurance when we are not being bound and held back by all these other things. And so one of the, our prayers should be, God, let me run my race with endurance, this race that you've given me. Let me run it well, God, is, and ask ourselves, is this helping me run? And if it doesn't help us run our race, then we need to set it aside. Second Timothy 2, 4, Paul uses a different analogy. It's of a soldier, but he, he's told Timothy, he said, be a good soldier, um, be a soldier with me. And then he says this, no soldier gets entangled in civilian pursuits. He doesn't mess with, he doesn't get tangled up in everyday things. His aim is to please the one who enlisted him. That needs to be our desire, that we need to look and say, okay, there's things that are entangling me. There's things that are slowing me down. God, I want to run this race with endurance. God, give me the grace to do that. In Ezekiel 44, 23, God talks about the priests and he says that they shall teach my people the difference between the holy and the holy and the common. Show them the distinguish between the unclean and the clean. I think oftentimes as, as Christians, we, we get the unclean and the clean part. We, we, we see sin, we, we understand that, but it's this holy and common. And I am convinced that we have become consumed by the common. That we have begun to take things that that are just common and that they don't have a place in the life of the believer, not of one of preeminence for sure. 
And because of that, we are not running our race very well. And so we need to pray that we're people of great endurance. But the third thing I think we need to pray here is that we keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. It says there in verse 2, looking to Jesus. We, we are going to run our race. We're going to be people of great faith when we keep our eyes focused on the right thing. And that thing is Jesus. It's Him. We have to keep our eyes fixed on Christ. I get it. We live in distracting times. I, it, it seems like we, we are being consumed, at least mentally, with what's going on. We're constantly thinking about it. We're constantly worrying about it. We're constantly checking what the latest polls are, what the latest numbers are, what the latest stats are. We want to know when we can get the economy back up, when we can open, when businesses will start, when we can go eat out again. It's very easy during this time for us to take our eyes off of Christ and place them on other things. But our hope isn't found in other things. Our hope is found in Christ. And when we place our hope and our trust in other things, then what happens is we are open for great disappointment great loss because other things change as we've seen other other things come and go like we've seen Christ endures forever and so the writer of Hebrews says keep your eyes fixed rightly keep it on Christ psalmist the psalm 121 verse 1 and 2 says this I lift up my eyes to the hills from where does my help come from my help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. The psalmist says, here's what I know. I'm looking to the one who gives me help and my help comes from God alone. We can, if we are not careful, begin to look for help in the wrong place. Certainly we need to be concerned about what's going on in our, in our um, country. We need to be concerned about what's going on in our city. We need to be concerned about what's going on in our county. But we also need to understand that although we are concerned with this, we do not focus on these things. That our help doesn't come from the White House. That our help doesn't come from the county. That our help doesn't come from the city. That our help comes from one place, and that place is God Himself. And so the writer of Hebrews says, fix your eyes there. In Isaiah 26, 3, it says, you keep Him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. In other words, Isaiah says that God keeps those who are looking at him in peace. And the reason is, is because things change and things crumble. And if you're looking at all the circumstances, you are seeing things turned upside down. And it becomes very concerning. It becomes very troublesome. But when our eyes are fixed on Christ, although we are aware of what's going on in our culture, we see our Savior seated at the right hand of the Father. Although things are changing rapidly, we keep our eyes on Christ who does not change. And so what the scripture says is that we have peace because of that. So we need to pray that we keep our eyes fixed on our great Savior. And the fourth thing is we need to pray that we find our greatest joy in fellowship with our great God. It says here that for the joy of set before him, endured the cross. Jesus went through this incredibly troubling, this incredibly difficult thing. And he did it because of the joy that was set before him. And I believe that Hebrews here gives us an idea of what that is. Is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Christ endured a lot. And part of the reason why he endured it was for me and you. He did it so that our sins could be atoned for, that we could be in right relationship with Him. But part of the reason why He did it, and the greater part, is because His joy was found in fellowship with the Father. And He knew that after the cross, He would be seated at God's right hand once again. And so there is this great joy, this fellowship that we have. And I'm going to tell you that one of the things that this has shown me is that we have found joy in all kinds of things that were never intended to be our source of joy. God has given us good things and certainly we should delight in them and be happy for them and thankful for them. But our joy must be found in fellowship with the Father. It's easy for us to be distracted. Zechariah 2.10 says this, Sing and rejoice, 
O daughter of Zion, for behold, I come and I will dwell in your midst, declares the Lord. Sing and rejoice. I don't believe that we sing and rejoice just when things are good. I believe as believers that we sing and rejoice all of the time because our fellowship with the Father is secure. There's a lot going on in our culture. There's a lot going on in our community. There's a lot going on in society around us. The question, though, really is, what is God doing in your life? You see, I I can't change really anything that's going on around me, and neither can you. But what we do have some say over is our own heart and allowing God to work there. So I want to challenge you, begin to pray that you will be a person of great faith, that God will help your unbelief, that that you will be a person who runs a race with endurance, that that you will be a person who keeps your eyes fixed on Christ, that you'll be a person who finds your highest joy in fellowship with the Father. Because hear me, I believe that when that takes place in our life, a watching community notices. When that's taking place in our life, lost family members take note. When that's taking place in our life, it changes our churches. It changes our schools. It changes our community. It changes our country. Let me pray for us. God, you are very, very good to us. God, I thank you for your word. God, we do live in troubling times, but God, you are not surprised by it and you are still on your throne. God, I pray that we will look to you because in you alone is our help. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. My name is Wes Smith. I'm the pastor at the Williston Church of God, and I'm glad to be here with you on this National Day of Prayer. And I'm here to pray. The mayor has asked me if I would pray about pray for our nation and the viruses and nat- uh, natural disasters. Uh, let me say one thing that I said to our church the other day. We've been told for the last few weeks to social distance and keep our distance from one another. And I try to encourage everybody to do that. But let me just remind you, don't keep your distance from God. Uh, the Bible says in James to draw nigh to God and he'll draw nigh to us. So we need to draw nigh to him more than ever in these times in which we live but let's pray together if you would please heavenly father we thank you we love you we thank you lord jesus for giving your life for us and i thank you lord for this country the united states of america i thank you for our freedoms our our land the people that risk their life or sacrifice their life that we might have this land and this freedom but our nation is in trouble. The whole world's in trouble, Lord, but many around this world, many nations, they do not know the true God. They're worshiping other gods and false gods. And so we're praying for them also because you are the only one true God and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So we lift up our nation here today, Lord. I pray for a healing. I pray for your touch upon us. Uh, We need help. We need hope. And we need you. I think back to the Old Testament, Jehoshaphat, the king, when three nations were coming against the people of Judah and it looked like they were overwhelmed and the future looked bleak. And he called for fasting and prayer. And, he, and in his prayer, he said, Lord, when we look at them, it looks like destruction and mayhem, but we're not looking at them, we're looking at you. And that's what we're doing here today, God. We're looking at you. Uh, man is not our answer. Uh, we're looking to our master. Science is not our answer. We're looking to our savior. And so, God, we're not just asking for more hospital beds. We're looking for the great physician to come in and to heal our land and this virus that's taken over the world and our land. God, we pray with all our heart that you would begin to heal and restore, that you begin to open up our economy, that you'd once again open up our churches where we can come together and worship you in spirit and in truth. And, God, we just pray that you would help us. We've learned some things over the last few weeks. We've learned to rearrange our priorities, Lord. We've learned some things we couldn't do without. We've learned we can do without them. Help us, Lord, in this time of repentance and time of 
of asking for your forgiveness, that you would restore some things and help rearrange things in our lives that really are valuable and put aside things that don't amount to anything. God, we pray during this time that you'll bring revival and restoration and we'll come out of this better than ever and we will be Christians. We will, we will represent you in the hard times as well as the good times and we will let others know Jesus Christ is our peace and our hope. And God, we look to you for help and we thank you because we believe you hear us and we believe help is on the way. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Folks, good afternoon. My name is Judge Browning, and the mayor has asked me to say a prayer today, and it's my honor and privilege. I hope you're taking care of yourself, you're taking care of your family, taking care of members of the community that may not be in a good position to take care of themselves. We're going to get through this. Just have faith and be strong. Now, I've been asked to pray for the president, the vice president, secretary of state, attorney general, Supreme Court, and Congress. If you would at this time, bow your head and let's raise a prayer to the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the blessings of this day. We thank you for the blessings of our community, the blessings of our state, and the blessings of our country. Lord, we are thankful that we are a free people. We are blessed and thankful that we are one nation under God. And during this time, good times and bad times, Lord, we pray that you would reach out and guide and direct our President Trump, that you would give him wise advice and wise advisors to advise him, that he will be deliberate, measured, and find a path for the country and the people's health and well-being during this pandemic virus. We pray for Vice President Pence also, Lord. We pray that he will seek your counsel and that he will adhere to your counsel and that he will listen and apply the advice of the medical uh, health experts that are assisting him in finding solutions for our people's health and well-being and a path outside of this pandemic virus. We pray for the Secretary of State that he will be a, a loyal and a good advisor to the President at this time. Lord, we pray for the Attorney General and the Department of Justice. We pray, Lord, that it would be the Constitution that guides him towards seeking justice in any case, in all cases, that his department investigates. We pray for the Supreme Court. Lord, give each one of them the wisdom and knowledge to make de the decisions that would please you. That as they consider and render decisions that apply not only to our generation, but to our future generations. And lastly, Lord, we pray for Congress. We pray that all members of Congress will abandon divisiveness, embrace unity as Americans, and seek the best solutions, both long and short term, for the American people. We pray all of this in Christ's name. Amen. Good afternoon. I want to thank uh, Mayor Jerry Robinson for organizing this National Day of Prayer in this modified scenario. Uh, it's just a, a different time we're living in right now, and it's great to be able to, to use technology to to reach out to our community and, and even beyond uh, for this National Day of Prayer. Today, I was asked to pray for our armed services. My name is Matt Brooks. I'm Levy County Commissioner for District 5 here in the Williston area. And so if you would, please bow with me and we will pray for our armed services. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for all the men and women in uniform that serve us every single day and the sacrifices that they make, Lord. I just pray uh, for their physical health, Lord. They're in so many different environments, Lord, and just the different situations that they're put into. Their sleep cycles are messed up, Lord. They're disrupted. They're exposed to uh, the virus right now, Lord, in different parts of the world, and we just pray a special hedge of protection over them, Lord, as they are doing their jobs daily, Lord. We pray for their relationships, Lord. We pray that while they're deployed, that their relationships would stay strong with their loved ones, Lord, and that's one of the toughest things for the military family. Lord, is just keeping the relationship strong, and we just pray for the families that are left behind uh, to take care of the families, Lord, that you would you would be with them and, and uh, just honor their sacrifice and everything that they do, Lord. I just pray for all the stress, Lord, that's going on in their lives right now, uh, just the stress of threatening job situations, Lord, threatening uh, financial situations, Lord, and just all the stress that military life brings. I just... Uh, 
pray a special hedge of protection around those families and the burden that's placed on them that they have to so often carry for all of us, Lord. I just pray for uh, constant communication from the families, Lord, for we know that it is um, through, through the prayers of all the families back home and the friends and the loved ones, and also just the constant communication to let them know that they're loved uh, and that we are honoring their sacrifice and the things that they do for us, Lord. Uh, just pray for the, for the stress, Lord, for the fear of the unknown. Um, you know, the families that are out there, there are, uh, that fear of the unknown can lead to uh, just really making assumptions about the, the worst possible outcome, Lord. And we just pray that you would relieve them of that stress, Lord, and let them uh, draw near to you in everything that they do uh, and, just, and help them overcome that worry, Lord. I just really ask for your blessing on their families and for everything that our armed forces do for our country, for this great nation, and for the freedoms that we are able to enjoy day in and day out. In your son Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Hello, Levy County, uh, the city of Williston, and all who will be watching uh, these videos. I want to thank uh, Mayor Jerry Robinson and the city of Williston for again inviting me to take part in this National Day of Prayer. Obviously things are a little different this year. Uh, COVID-19 is around and we're all practicing our social distancing and trying to stay safe. Um, and so uh, it's nice that we have technology and the ability to continue to pray in this way. So I would just ask you all to join me now as I'm gonna be praying for our elected county officials um, that's the school board, the uh, county commissioners, and all the constitutional officers, and our kids in our schools. Um, so y'all join me now as we pray. Heavenly Father, just want to thank you, Lord, for this beautiful day, uh, and it is beautiful outside, another day that you've created, another opportunity for us to live. Uh, Lord, we want to say thank you, God, that you're an awesome God, and that COVID-19 did not catch you by surprise. Thank you, Lord, that you are even in control of that, and Lord, even though there's many bad things going on in regards to this terrible virus. Uh, Lord, you will use it for the good of those that love you. So we thank you, Lord Jesus, for that. Thank you for loving us, for your mercy and grace over our lives. Lord, I want to lift to you now um, our county commissioners, Lord. Uh, just had a meeting today where they're going over and making decisions in regard to how our county will uh, potentially start to reopen and our economy start to flourish again, hopefully, God. And so just lift them up. Uh, as they're making critical decisions for our county, God. And um, Lord, just give them insight, give them wisdom. It's great to know, Lord, that we have a group of county commissioners that love you and that they seek your guidance for the decision they make. And Lord, we believe that you are guiding them. So Lord, just be with them and help them during this time. Uh, Lord, I wanna pray for our constitutional officers, one of which I am, God. And I thank you for the opportunity that you've given me to serve Levy County as their property appraiser. Um, I want to lift up uh, Sheriff Bobby McCallum, our tax collector, Linda Fugit, our supervisor of elections, uh, Ms. Tammy Jones, our superintendent of schools, Mr. Jeff Edison, and myself, Lord, as we lead out in this community and, and for the opportunity you've given us to do this. Lord, guide us in these days to come. Uh, help us in the decisions that we have to make in regard to our responsibilities in this county. And Lord, bless us as we move forward and i uh, just want to thank you ahead of time for what you are going to do there lord and lord i also want to lift up to you uh, the levy county school board uh, and those five members um, lord and, and the decisions they are having to make critical decisions involving our children and education and lord uh, just the times that we're going through right now where we're not going to have school the rest of this year uh, seniors are not going to get to uh, to have a, a ceremony where they graduate and uh, sports has ended and this is very 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 hard God on on our on our people our students our leaders and so Lord just lift them up to you and Lord I ask you use this for the good of those that love you Lord and bless them as we move forward Lord I pray for these kids that are missing out Lord just give them contentment in their hearts and uh, Lord help them as they go forward in their future uh, in their careers and their uh, continued educations. And Lord, for the kids that'll be coming back next year, Lord, uh, bring them back with a renewed spirit, Lord, and, and an appreciation for what they've just missed, God. And uh, just continue to bless them in that way also, Lord. And for each of those school board members and the decisions they have to make as, as we move forward, 
Lord, just bless their hearts, give them insight, help them make good decisions uh, for our educational system. Lord, we thank you again for the opportunity to come to you and, and to lift these things up in prayer, uh, knowing that you hear us, God, knowing that you are in control. And we just thank you for loving us just that much. Uh, Lord, I love you, and we just praise you, and we ask all this in the wonderful and holy name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. God bless you. I'm Pastor Johnny Jones, and I'm tasked on this National Day of Prayer with uh, covering our city, uh, our mayor, and the officials of all uh, of the city, the various city government offices. And I want to ask today that you join me in prayer in covering these very important offices, not just those who work and serve us, but also the residents inside the borders. And as we celebrate the National Day of Prayer virtually today, I would ask that you bow your heads wherever you are and pray with me. Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for this opportunity to come into your presence. We're thankful, Lord, because you are good and your mercy endures forever. Lord, we approach you today worshiping you as the God of the universe. Not only, Lord, as the God of the universe, but the God of this nation. And God, we believe also the God of this city. And we pray that you would cover the city of Williston today, that you would bless every person who uh, gives leadership. Father, we pray a special prayer of mercy and grace on our mayor. We pray that you would bless him in every decision that he makes. And we pray that you would bless him in giving moral guidance and leadership to all of those who respect the office and the position that he holds. We pray, Lord God, for each one of those city employees who reports to work to make this town of ours a success and to make it a pleasant place to live. We ask that you would watch over them in their daily duties, that you would help them to do everything that they do, God, in a way that pleases and serves you. God, we give you all honor and glory. And your word says that the effectual fervent prayers of the righteous availeth much. We believe today, God, as we effectually and fervently pray that you will cover the residents of this city, every committee, every council person who has given themselves selfishly to work for this city. God, I, I ask right now that you would bless them and watch over them and that you would keep them. We ask all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, hello. Well, I'm so excited to be a part of uh, what God is doing in our own little local city, Williston, Florida. I'm glad to be a part of this uh, great monument of the National Day of Prayer, where, and I thank God for our mayor, thank God for all our citizens who have come together and realized we still do need prayer. And today I'm asked to pray for the city police department, the sheriff department, fire department, first responders. My name is Willie Battles. I am the pastor of Unity Temple International Fellowship right here in Williston, Florida. Great to be, oh my God, great to be a Levy County resident at this time to know that there's somebody uh, that's in this county that still believe in the power of prayer. So, agree with me. We're getting ready to pray and we're getting ready to believe God for some supernatural things to happen and to watch over all our city officials, city police department, uh, sheriff department, fire department, first responders, uh, and dispatchers. All right. So we're getting ready to pray. So join with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you for this day. God, we ask you to watch over our city. Thank you for being, watching over our city. Thank you for being in our county. Thank you for the, even for the, even for the very minimal cases of COVID-19 that we have had as a county. God, because I believe that we are praying county. And God, today I pray. I pray over our chief. I pray over every one of his officers in the name of Jesus. Watch over them. Protect them on the highways in the name of Jesus Christ. God, as they uh, go out, God, protect them from COVID-19. God, that they'll do their job to the best of their ability to work with our community in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for Chief Stroh. Thank you for all of his officers in the name of Jesus Christ. God, I thank you for our sheriff, uh, Bobby McCallum. I ask you to watch over him, watch over all his deputies and officers in the Levy County in the name of Jesus. God, watch over them, protect them. No weapon formed against them shall be able to prosper. God, I thank you for who you are. Thank you for what you're going to do in their lives. Thank you for the great sheriff and thank you for his great officers. And I ask you to bless them, keep them safe on the road in Jesus' name. God, also too, we pray for our fire department. God, we ask you to watch over them. We ask you to be with them, strengthen them in the name of Jesus Christ. God, God, you are a great God and you're worthy to be praised. Bless them, God, if they go out and have to respond to accidents and fires. God, we ask you to protect them as you always have been in the name of Jesus Christ. God, I thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for our first responders. God, are responding on the job, doing a professional job, doing it in the best that they know how. Lead them and guide
guide them in the name of Jesus Christ. God, you are a great God. Thank you for our dispatchers and they dispatch God in a professional manner in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for all our, all our workers, God. Ask you to continue to be over them, guide them, lead them. You are a great God. Thank you for this great city of Williston. Thank you for what you're doing in the midst of Levy County. God, you're great and you're greatly to be praised. God, as, a, as an apostle, as a bishop, I speak life over this area. I speak prosperity over this area. I speak healing over this land in this particular area in the name of Jesus Christ. God, you're great and you're greatly to be praised. Thank you for what you're doing and thank you for what you're going to continue to do. Thank you, God. It'll come to the left and come to the right, but it won't come near us. Thank you for being great to this city, God. Thank you for being great to this county. And God, I thank you. I pray for our mayor also that you continue to strengthen him and know that there is power in prayer. And God, we give your name the praise, the glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Hi, my name is Joan Wells, and I'm pastor at the First Presbyterian Church in Williston. And um, I am here today um, to pray for our local churches and uh, the area around us, as well as the nation. And so... Um, I'd like to begin by letting you know that I read something about Carl Sagan and he said for small creatures such as we the vastness is bearable only through love so if you will bow your heads and pray with me I'd appreciate it infinite spirit of love on this national day of prayer we come before the creator of all things humbly seeking guidance for our religious communities and grace for your people. We may seem a little bit overwhelmed, but our nation is greater than the hardships and the challenges that we face. We remember the powerful truth on which our nation was founded. We are one nation under God, and in him we find our true hope and peace. We are thankful for those who empower us with your strength bless us with your protection and guide us so that we may have the right to worship freely in this world and all while you are looking after us and keeping your promises in times of our greatest need americans have traditionally turned to prayer to help them find a way through their trials in periods of uncertainty. We are no different today as we continue to face unique challenges posed by the coronavirus pandemic. Americans, millions of Americans, are unable to gather for worship in their churches, synagogues, temples, mosques, and other houses of worship. And it poses a test like we have never tackled before. But now more than ever, we cannot cease to ask for your wisdom, healing, comfort, and strength as we are settled in place away from others. Instead, we must be inspired by your faith, by our faith, to bolster each other's spirits and find innovative ways of worship that will keep supporting our brothers and sisters. Today, we pray for all those individuals and commun communities around us as well as our nation who are affected by the coronavirus we ask that you would place your healing hands upon them restoring their health helping them to resume active lives with their families and friends we pray for all of the health care workers who work tirelessly to provide excellent care for their patients while putting themselves at risk as they seek to be instruments of your amazing grace. We appreciate how citizens in our community feed and serve the community as, as they deliver mail and packages, as they prepare takeout meals, as they keep grocery store supplies flowing so we can have as normal life as possible. We are thankful for their sacrifices and wish them continued good health. We pray for small business owners and their employees facing financial setbacks. 
May employment and businesses return to normal once this has all run its course. But in the meantime, meet people's needs and offer them solace. We are all well aware of the power of prayer and how it has the power to change the places where we live and who we are. Acknowledging the fragility of life, we can no longer take anything for granted. So we may share the love you have given us with those in our lives. It doesn't matter how small our gestures may be, just as long as our actions come from real love and it uplifts those who are in deep, deep need of compassion. We want you to work in us. Remove our fears as you enliven our spirits, help us focus on our purpose and strike a fire in our hearts. As you work to bring all things together, restore and rebuild what we have lost. Show us how to respond in these tough times as we pray God's glory across the nation. In his holy name we pray, amen. Hey everybody, this is Rob Sistrunk. I'm the head usher and lay leader at Williston First United Methodist Church and glad to be here today. The mayor has asked me to pray for our city and to pray for our family and friends that we have that are around us today uh, that we've gotten to know very well over the last couple weeks, let me just say that. So if you'll join me in a word of prayer um, and bow your heads wherever you are. Lord, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for coming here. We thank you for our town. Lots of us are from other places and, and could live other places, but choose to live here and, and we're glad to be here. We thank you for um, the leadership that we have in this town and our elected officials and the folks that take care of us every day, whether they're working on the electrical lines or um, working on the streets or working in the offices here in town. Um, we just thank you for all of our family and friends that have made this just a wonderful time, um, actually, for us to be together, even though it's an uncertain time uh, in our society for the, the, uh, the COVID-19 and all the, the different things that we deal with every day. Um, but the fact that we can come home and be with our families um, and enjoy our time together, just, um, it's just something that we want to be incredibly thankful for. So we ask you to just continue to help us through this time. We ask you to continue to help our town. We know that sooner than later, things are gonna get a lot better, they're gonna get a lot more open, and we'll be together in our churches and in our public places that, that we can uh, gather together as we move forward. We just ask you to forgive us of our sins, and we thank you for this day. And we, we pray, amen. At this time now, we ask that you join us as Mandy Fugit sings, God Bless America. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains to the prairies to the oceans white with foam. God bless America. My home, sweet home. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains to the prairies, through the oceans white with foam. God bless America, my home sweet home. God bless America, my home sweet home. Our closing prayer with my closing remarks to follow, will be presented by former Williston City Councilman, Jack Scrooge. In closing here today, I would like for us to refer to scripture in 2 Chronicles, Chronicles chapter 7, verses 6 and 13. God says, when I shut the heavens up so that there's no rain, 
and I command the locusts to devour the land or send a plague among my people, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. Then Psalms 46, 10 and 11, he tells us to be still and know that I am God. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. I think God's had us still for a few weeks. So in closing, let's, if you will, right where you are, just bow your head and close your eyes and just be still for a moment. And let God speak to you. Let God speak to your heart in this time and in this moment today. God, we thank you for this time that we live in. It's the greatest time on earth to be alive in this world today. The blessings that you have blessed us with as a people are just indescribable compared to generations past. And God, we find ourselves in trouble here today in our in our world and in our nation. God, we just want to pray for our people that we would recognize that you are God and that you are with us. And if we humble ourselves and pray and seek your face, your promises are that you will hear from heaven and will forgive our sin and, and heal our land. And that's our prayer today, God. In these unpredictable times that we find ourselves living in today, God, you are not unpredictable. You are solid. You are the God of Jacob. You are our fortress. You never change. This didn't surprise you God, what we're in today with this disease and illness. So God, we just ask you to, we pray for our leaders today. Um, our president, the task force that's been appointed to deal with the pandemic. God, we pray for those people. They work tirelessly to lead this nation in a direction that will help heal us. And we praise for them. The doctors and the nurses, God, we just pray and lift them up to you. Those that have the virus, Lord, and their families, God, we lift them people up to you. Our prayer is, Lord, that we would find you as a nation in the middle of all this. That's our prayer today. And as we close this National Day of Prayer, we look to you, God, for healing. May we turn to Jesus Christ in our lives, individually and corporately as a, as a nation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Again. I wish to thank each and every one of you for joining us today and ask that you continue your prayers because we are in need of it today more than ever. Let us remember Philippians 4, 6. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Thank you and may God bless each and every one and God bless these United States of America. <music>